have to be in the mood. I waited all week for this crap. <laughs> there was a week between last night and today? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Access memory bank. Circuits activated. Execute digital transfer. We are controlling transmission. Leave now before the exits are sealed. Our mission is about to begin. So please, fasten your seatbelts and prepare for takeoff. Yo, yeah, you know what time it is. This is Joe Riggio. And Katie O'Neill with Kiss My Keister. And as you heard in our intro, we have locked down the exits and there's no way to get away from us. Nope. It is showtime and y'all are stuck. Yeah, for a good hour. At least. <laughs> <laughs> our blessing, your curse. <laughs> That's right. Thank you everyone for tuning back in to Kiss My Keister. And tonight we are going to address those favorite pet peeves of everyone. Again, as usual. Tonight, we are coming to you from the Center of the Arts and Humanities Building in downtown beautiful, sunny Sarasota. How are you tonight? Well, it's a little cool, but not as cold as up north, so I'm loving it. Uh, me too. I could care less anything about the ice and snow. It, just, I... <laughs> it means pain to me. Well, yeah, that's why I escaped Philadelphia, PA area, but... I was on a network call with a friend today, and they were visiting family up in North Carolina. And I looked, and he was all dressed in his, like, winter gear. And I'm like, looks cold up there. He goes, yeah, it is. I'm like, yeah, I don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> good for him. Good for him. But it's all good that you want to spend time with family. It's good. So, Katie, anything uh, before we get into the pet peeves, anything you want to, like, oh, wait, hold on. I got this. I got this. Release the Katie. Oh, God. <laughs> And who are you, Zeus? No, no. that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. You cannot imitate him. We shall see you later. Uh-huh. Anyway. Wow, I miss our co-host. Nicole's not with us tonight. That's awful. We need her more often. She's a riot. I don't know. It's a half nose one or the other. Even though in the after party, we did do the time warp. We did. We did. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that is a piece of music out of Rocky Horror Picture Show. If you haven't seen it, you all need to go see that because it is not just a movie. It's an experience. <laughs> well, that's what they say about a lot of things. And yeah, I have to say I saw the movie with Tim Curry uh, and I'm going to show my age when I first saw it was VHS tape when I watched that with my friends. And then we went to uh, the Rocky Horror Live and they will ask you, whoever's in the audience, if you are a virgin. Uh, and that doesn't mean like, have you done it? It just means, have you ever seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show? And if you say no, you've never seen it live, then it's a good experience. And I say you do it. Uh huh. I call it targeting your audience. <laughs> no, don't scare them away. It's not that bad, Katie. No, it's just toilet paper, rice, and water. Oh, no, 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 no. Now now you're scaring people. They're going to think, well, you're going to toilet paper and throw rice at me? <laughs> no, 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 no. The whole thing is they give you those items that during the show, you throw those certain items at certain parts of the thing that they give you. And what is it? Is it the girl's name, Janet? They scream yes. the B word. And the yes. uh, the guy's name, they scream, was it the A word, I think it is? Uh, probably. So, yeah, somewhere in there, they, they say those things. Yeah. Damn it, Janet. 
Oh, I love it. Damn it, Janet. Yes, uh, that's Susan Sarandon at her finest hour. She She's always been so beautiful anyway, but she starred in that. And that was one of her beginning roles in movies. I went when I was in my 20s to Blueberry Hill in St. Louis to see that. And yes, I got toilet paper thrown at me. I got rice thrown at me. I got squirt gunned the whole time I was there. And we had an absolute ball. Oh, that's amazing. So other than that, anything else happen? Yeah, all kinds of things are happening. You know, it's it's the typical... Um, our everyday pet peeves that are just driving me insane. This morning on the way to work, I was almost hit, not once, but three times. And two of them were people who were moving from a right-hand lane to a far left lane, which, mind, is two lanes away from the right lane. Uh, never even looked in the rearview mirror. Didn't bother, put their blinker on, and just proceeded to start moving over. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm here, I'm here, you can't do this. Apparently they can. Well, <laughs> I let them, because I preferred to get to work in one piece today. Yeah, I, I hear you, 100%. The traffic is always nominal. What's bothering me, though, is that the traffic isn't so nominal anymore. People are reaching the point where they have had enough Cabin fever has set in, and the traffic is proving it. People are tired of being indoors. They're getting out, whether it's to go back to work, whether it's to go to the store, whether it's to go shopping, whatever it is, we're dealing with it. Well, yeah, not only that, you also have the fact, even though Canada closed its borders and all this other stuff, so we have no Canadian skis down here, we still have the normal United States snowbirds that are coming down. And I've seen them in droves coming down here. And I now, still say, if they're snowbirds, why can't we shoot them? <laughs> well, they could probably say the same thing to us if we go visit up north. I'm smart enough not to go. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's one of those things. They are coming down. And I get why they're coming down, too, if possible. Because we're coming back into the winter months. They don't want to get stuck indoors doing absolutely nothing. When everyone's been told that Florida and, like, Arizona and California, oh, you can go outside. You could go do this. You could do this. Well, why don't I go there? Well, sure. Why not? And then you can crowd the beaches and you can get COVID a lot easier. Potatoes, potatoes. Hey, it's a mask or not? To a mask or not to a mask? That is my question. No, I don't think it's a question. I think it just is getting old. Yeah. I'm tired of wearing a mask. I'm tired of feeling like I if I don't if I walk into my building without a mask, somebody's gonna report me. You know, I've just reached the point where I'm really sick and tired of it. I've had enough COVID. I don't want to play anymore. Go home. Well, here's the big thing is I've I've heard, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard from you know a friend of a friend of a friend type of thing, that they're saying that COVID is right now when it started as a pandemic. Now they're going to be calling it soon an endemic, which means every year, just like the cold, just like the flu, COVID will come around. Well, and now that they've introduced it into the system, of course, because it's going to lie dormant until somebody activates it again next year. Yes, and now they're talking about the vaccines with Series 1, Series 2, and all these other things, but we don't know how that's going to go over very well. I don't think it's going to go over very well at all. Well, once again, this is all hearsay and whatnot, but one of my friends introduced me to a video of a gentleman that was uh, a British guy, and he was talking about like the whole system with COVID, the scandals, all this other stuff, blah, blah. And basically, he was kind of going into the fact of the matter of that um, COVID or when the vaccines come out, you are going to be given a choice uh, the way how it, he's predicting it. You'll be given a choice that if the government has to shut down and you have to be given a stimulus or something type of thing to sort off your pay, you must opt in to take the vaccine because if you don't take the vaccine you will not be given the money in a well, sense well you know what for no more money that are given us i don't care 
<laughs> well, I said at the very beginning when we started this uh, podcast with as your new co-host and obviously everything else, if the government wants to pay me $2,000 a month just for me to sit at home and do nothing, here, here, go for it. Pay do my bills. Do you really think they're going to give you that, though? No, they are not. Let's back up a little bit. If you get anything from the government, it's always conditional. Think about this, folks. It's like a father-in-law who says, I'll buy you this house, but this is what you have to do in order to get this. To me, that seems like a perfect and total waste of effort because I don't want to be indebted to anybody. I don't want to owe the government anything, and they don't have a right to stick my arm with anything I don't want in it. Well, that's a that's a good and valid point, Katie, is because the plain simple fact of the matter is no matter what you want to say, no matter what you want to do, with the new regime that may be or may not be coming in, who knows, type of scenario, but people do not research both sides of the party. No, they do not. Because like I said, as we started this podcast, as your co-host, I said, L- I will play devil's advocate here and there and look to the other side of the fence because the mm-hmm. other side will show you points that you did not see before. And that's what you have to locate and look at. And if you don't see these points, you're going to just buy into the BS and say, ooh, shiny object. Mm-mm. No, let's, let's, let's call it what it is. It's a coercion. They're going to coerce the populace into doing what they want you to do. And believe me, if there is a carrot dangling in your face, that means they want something in return. And you better be careful because if you take that, you are responsible for that in return. And let me tell you, it ain't always what you think it's going to be. And sometimes it can be a whole lot worse than you ever imagined. Well, yeah, I agree with that 100%. But then you also have to, I think the whole big thing was the Obamacare when that first came out. Another disaster. That has always been a disaster since day one, no matter what anyone says at this point. The moment it was instilled, a lot of insurance companies pulled out. A lot of carriers were not taking anything. A lot of medical places were not even taking them anymore. Like, nope, sorry, can't take this. And here's the thing. And you really have to think about this, people. Obamacare was founded at the very beginning that if you did not pay into the health care system through Obamacare... You had a fee to pay when you paid your taxes. You got penalized for that. That means you can have it, but we're going to make you pay for it one way or another. Exactly. And where did the right be taken away from me that if I want a health care... That's my guy given right, not the government to tell me I can do health care. Okay, now I think you've hit on the uh, crux of the whole thing. The point is the government thinks that they should be able to control what the populace does. Now, let's, just in the event that none of you have ever seen it, I highly suggest you go back in your archives, start watching shows like Soylent Green. Shows that have, um, let's see, what was the one with, um, 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 it's the one where everybody was killed before they hit 30. Oh, um, I forget weird. I know the movie, it's in yeah. the top of my head, but I can't think of it. Yeah. But we'll remember it as soon as the show's over. Like, oh, I'm sure. Dang it. Yeah. But, but yeah. People are, they're controlling what you think, what you eat, what you do, and... I'm sorry. I'm old school. I'm not going to let it happen. Look, um, when someone uh, kind of shooshed me the other day when I said the S word for versus the C mm-hmm. word type of scenario, I have to tell you, I know a lot of people from other countries that were under that type of S word. And let me tell you, they were happy to move back here because, or to move here because they were not told what to do. And they even shared stories where their government said, nope, you can only have one thing of bread extra amount a day. You that's can only right, have because this. because that's all you're entitled to. Yes. Because that's what the government would allow you to have. So if you think that things are bad now, go ahead. Enjoy your socialism because I'm telling you right now, I knew too many people that live overseas that are going, I want to come to America. Why? They can't because they have to join a pool 
to get a visa. Mm -hmm. They will not let just anybody leave.